Hi everybody at home, I'm Alondra Anaya, weather anchor for Telemundo 62 and we're here, Citizens Bank Park, one of my favorite weeks of the year, Weather Education Week, because we're not only talking about science, but we're talking about baseball, one of the greatest sports of all time. And well, today we're talking all things safety when it comes to weather. We got rain, we got wind, there's a lot of stuff, even, you know, the possibility of severe weather here in the tri-state area. Tornado warnings, severe weather watches, we got it all. So what happens if you're here at the ballpark in the stands and it starts to pour or it gets really windy? Well, know that the Phillies have a way to protect you. Meet Mike Bookholder. He's been the head groundskeeper at Citizens Bank Park for more than 18 years. He was even a part of the field design process, which was built to endure even the worst weather conditions. This field, when the sod's not on top of it, will drain somewhere in excess of 25 inches an hour of rainfall. Once we sod it, it drops down probably somewhere in the 10 to 12 inch an hour range, but still clearly way more than what we would need. Uh, on an average rain, even in an extreme situation. We can keep going for quite a while until our clay on the infield skin starts getting a little too sloppy. And then usually the umpires will shut things down and we'll wait it out, put the tarp on, and then get going whenever we can after, after the storm has passed. So you may be asking yourself, how does Mike know when a storm is coming towards the park? We do several things to, to figure that out. We have our, our weather control center that we have right behind uh, home plate down by our visiting dugout where we have a full series of uh, radars that we monitor all the time. And when the crew chief signals that the game needs to be paused due to weather, it's time to take action. All right, so the grounds crew, they'll have their work cut out for them to get this tarp on the field. They've got some extra helping hands, which you need on a day like this. The 170 by 170 foot tarp that protects the field weighs 1,400 pounds dry. So imagine the strength it takes to roll it out. Our crew, usually around 20 people, will grab a hold of the straps on the edge of the tarp and actually manually pull it over the rest of the field, stretch it out and put it down into place. Then we'll usually spike it down at that point to keep the wind from moving it any. And if the wind is strong enough, it makes the job a little more tough. I've had guys on my crew and ladies on my crew get picked up in the air five, six, seven feet. It, it's, it can get dangerous at times depending on what's going on. So we always tell our staff, Always hold on to the tarp straps. Don't wrap them around your wrist because you may have to let go for your own safety. And our, our rule of thumb around here is if the tarp's going up, let go of it. We'd rather have our tarp run off a little bit and chase it down than have to deal with somebody getting injured. While Mike and his crew protect the field and the players, the fans need to get out of the elements as well. And sometimes if it gets bad enough, we do have to, to let people know that they need to clear the seating bowl and, and seek shelter underneath the concourse areas where they're a bit more protected. Uh, in, in extreme situations, like if we had a, a tornado or something coming in, they do also have a protocol in place for that to get people into secure areas. The ballpark is equipped with lightning rods all along the tip top of the stadium lights to attract any bolts from thunderstorms. This ensures the strikes stay away from the field and the fans. But as weather conditions get worse, it's still important to take safety protocols seriously at the ballpark. And it helps if you know the difference between a watch and a warning. If the National Weather Service issues a severe thunderstorm watch, it means that the weather conditions are favorable for thunderstorms that produce large hail or damaging wind. You need to be prepared. If that watch turns into a warning, you need to take action because severe weather is happening and heading your way. So there you have it. The Phillies have a plan in place to keep us safe in case of rain, wind, lightning, thunder, severe weather, you name it, they have us protected. But what if you didn't get a chance to come to the game today and well, you were watching it from home? Those safety protocols are a little different. So what do you say we take it indoors? So it's really important that we know how to keep safe here inside of our own homes during severe weather. But maybe you're asking, what is severe? What does that word mean? Well, know that it's storms that can have hail up to one inch or more in size and gusts of wind 
of more than 58 miles per hour. Sometimes even tornadoes can be in those storms. And when there's a possibility for tornadoes in our area, it's really important that we know the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning. We'll start with the tornado watch. In a watch, you need to be prepared because a tornado is possible. You gotta be prepared to take shelter, but you don't need to take immediate action until a tornado warning is issued. When the warning is issued, that is where you have to take action because a tornado is either indicated on radar or it has been spotted on the ground. That's where you take shelter immediately. It's not only important to know the difference between a watch and a warning, but also to understand the tornado scale, also known as the enhanced Fujita scale. Tornadoes range from EF0 to EF5. All can be dangerous, but a higher number equals stronger wind speeds and more damage. For example, an EF0 tornado can produce winds from 65 to 85 miles per hour, which may cause light damage to trees or roofs, while an EF5 tornado can have wind speeds of more than 200 miles per hour, causing incredible damage, like flattened homes. When we talk about seeking shelter, the safest spot is always your basement. You wanna go down to your basement and wait until the tornado warning has expired until you come out. But what if you don't have a basement? What if you live in a high rise building? Don't worry, there are also ways to keep you and your family safe. First things first, you see this window behind me? We wanna get as far away from windows as possible. So I'm gonna show you a spot that we can go to. So the safest spot to go to inside of your house is gonna be the most central room, somewhere far away from the windows. That's either the basement, like we mentioned, a closet, or a bathroom. In my case, it's the bathroom. It's the most central room, there's no windows in here. And a really important tip, we can use the bathtub as a safe place during tornado warnings. Really important. And also, we don't know how long we're gonna need to be inside of our safe spot. That is why we gotta make sure we have a severe weather safety kit. Let me show you what you're gonna need. So it's time to make our severe weather safety kit really important because like I said, we don't know how long we're gonna have to be in our safe place, in our shelter. So let me show you everything that you are going to need inside of your kit. First things first, might be a little cold inside your house. So we got to get a blanket. So there's that. Second, also one of the most important things, a first aid kit. You got band-aids in here, you got ointment, you got everything that you're going to need in case somebody in your family gets a little cut or something like that. Really, really important. You might get thirsty. Remember that when we have severe weather, we don't want to use any of the plumbing. So you got to make sure that you have bottles of water inside of your safety kit. Another thing that we need, a flashlight, because we might lose power. The power might go out inside of your house. Extra batteries for that flashlight. And you know what else is gonna need? A little more battery? Our cell phone. So you wanna make sure that we have some extra chargers. One for you, maybe your siblings need some as well, so make sure that you have that inside of your safety kit. Might get a little hungry, you never know. You gotta make sure you have a couple of snacks. Got some tuna here and some crackers, stuff that you know will last you a while. If you made your kit and you know that maybe some of your snacks are gonna expire, it's gonna be time to, you know, check the expiration date and change that out if you have to. If not, make sure you get some non-perishable goods in there. Lastly, a backpack because you need somewhere to store all of your stuff and you need to have it ready before the severe weather hits. So that's all you need. I'm going to challenge you at home to go on a little scavenger hunt. Do it by yourself, go with your parents, do it with your siblings, but create your severe weather safety kit. 
because you never know when you're going to need it, and we want you to be safe. For the first time last year, we experienced a tornado warning, and we had no idea. Being from California, you don't get those tornado warnings. Uh, so we're getting all these alerts, and we're doing it, and we're like, where do we go? Everyone's like, to the basement. So you go to the basement. That's our plan. We go to the basement. We have flashlights and everything downstairs ready to go. We have a couple things of food if we need it down there. But uh, for the most part, we know what we're going to do. If we hear the, the sirens or if we hear uh, an alarm on our, on our phones for a tornado warning, we're going to the basement. We have all our stuff we need and we're ready. Well, I had a blast today learning how the Phillies keep us safe during severe weather in the ballpark, learning where we can take shelter inside of our homes, and even making our severe weather safety kits. Don't forget to do your scavenger hunt at home. Ask mom and dad to help you gather all the things you need to put in your safety kit and make sure you have it ready in case of severe weather. That's all we have for today, but get ready because tomorrow we're gonna learn all things pressure with my friend and your meteorologist, Steve Sosna.